everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are here for Vlogmas uh, day six and today we're going to be making a little coin pouch that has a couple of little card slots in the front and enough room in there to put a whole heap of coins and whatnot in there so you can put some cash because it's deep enough to put some cash and also some coins that you can grab it and just scoot on out the door and you don't have to take your handbag with you i hate doing that and we're also going to be opening up day six of our advents so let's get started <laughs> We are getting closer to Christmas. We are up to day six for our Advent opening and I've got them just sitting off the side. We've got three that we're going to be opening today. One is from a lovely friend Gail who has uh, sent me up a box for the Advent and also one from Said With Love and another one from a, a Decor Me uh, Mona, uh, was it? Moni K, yes, and they are Christmas autumns, which you can see some of them hanging here. So we've had an angel and we got these yesterday. So these ones are little discs. There was three of those. We also had a little bead one and we've got a lovely Christmas tree and also a star with a crystal on it. All right, so I'm just going to grab them and then we will open them up and see what we got. All right, so I've gone and got them and we are going to open them. So we're going to start with the ornament one first. So that one is day six. Okay, this one feels like a soft one. So far we've had like some wooden ones and we've had some clay ones and yeah, so it's uh, it's good getting a nice variety. All right. Oh, this is adorable. So this is a little hard and it's all pinked on the edge. And it's so cute and it's just got some calico on the back. That's going to look adorable. Very cute indeed. And I love how she's put the little beads on it. And these are all handmade by her as well. And I, if you have missed, I haven't got a card in front of me. I've put it away, I think. But you can go and have a look at yesterday's video and you'll be able to see um, where she is located. So we'll hang that one there. So by the end of the end of the month, there'll be a whole heap of um, different ones hanging there. So that's going to be a lot of fun to see them all. And then I'll put them onto um, I'll put them onto the Christmas tree as closer we get. All right, the next one is day six from Said with Love. This was a last minute addition to my um, Advent opening. This one feels soft too. So let's pull it out and see what we got. All right, so. Okay, so we've got some fabric. Oh, this matches. <laughs> we got this yesterday and I put my um, clips into it because I decided I wasn't going to hang up the bags. But we have, it says on the thing here, all the makings for a cute mug rug to match your tea tin. Uh, view the video on how to make it on our YouTube channel. Okay, so there's a little, we've got a little um, pamphlet in here. And it just tells you what the requirements are and everything like that, which I'm not going to show you because, um, yeah, so it's about eight inches and it's, uh, so basically it's got step-by-step -step instructions and it matches our little tin perfectly, which is absolutely adorable. And it's got spoons for the backing or the front. I suppose you could have it a reversible and then that for the top and a piece of cotton wadding. So that's going to be cute to make up. I might make that up in one of the crafting videos in the next few days. I'll go and suss out their YouTube channel. Did not know they had a YouTube channel. I'll have to start tagging them on YouTube and that way they'll um, they'll get to see what it is. So that's super cute and I love how it just matches my little tin as well. All right, so the next one that, that we're going to open is day six and it's from the lovely Gail. No rattling in this one. It's not squishy. It's a little bit firm. All right, let's open it up and find out what it is, shall we? I love all the effort that Gail's gone to. She's got in a little dog bag and then it's wrapped up in its little um, ooh, champagne and strawberries. Oh, that is so nice. That is just mm, yum. 
So it's champagne and strawberries and it's from, I'm not sure how to say it. So I'll just hold it up for you to have a look. And they are, um, they're in Gladesville in New South Wales. I used to live up the road from, um, up the road from there. So this has olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter, castor oil, distilled water, fragrance and a whole heap of other stuff all the different and it's 130 grams and look at the top it's so cute i i am i have wanted to make soap for such a longest time and i am in awe of the uh, people that make all these soaps they're absolutely gorgeous so that is the company and they have a website which is that name.com.au so you can go and see it I'm going to put that up here with my collection of soaps. <laughs> I leave them there because then the kids don't use them. And because um, the kids get me a lot of soap too. They get me the Tilly soap. So I use that on a daily basis. And then when I'm having my nice baths and whatnot, I'll get a block and I'll use it. And then I'll use that for a couple of weeks. And then I'll put that in a little container and then start using something else. All right. So that is day six of our advent. Thank you so much for joining me um, for the past videos for the advent. But now let's get into making our little coin purse with um, card slots. All right. And I will we'll see you at the end of the video. All right. So we're here to make our little coin purse that holds our cards as well as some coins. Um, you can make this as scrappy as you want. This project really does lend itself to being a scrap busting project. It's a little coin purse that I've made a couple of times, not too many times. It's just one that I sort of put together off the top of my head. So you are going to need a few things today. So you can see all of these little tools and everything here. You're going to need your general sewing supplies, wonder clips, um, as well as maybe some pins. You're going to need a zipper foot and um, also a screwdriver to change your zipper foot if you need it. You're going to need a rotary cutter, something to poke out your project, a tailor's awl to help you at the sewing machine, um, some scissors to cut out your fabric and a rotary cutter, each one either one sorry um, and you're also going to need some thread snips over at your sewing machine as well going to need a quilting ruler and of course you're going to need some fabric so as i said this is a great scrap busting project you can make it very mu very much a multicolored project and um, i'm going to use some leftover fabric from my um casserole dish cozy so i thought what perfect thing to use it for so i have uh some exterior fabric you also need a lining fabric now with your lining fabric a good fabric is calico or a light fabric so you can see what's going on in there you don't want to have a dark fabric for your lining so you want some of that and you also need some shape flex 101 as well all right so what we need to cut out is the following so once you've got all of that oh and you need a zip as well obviously because if we're going to be doing a um a zipper and we have our zipper foot so we need also need the zip <laughs> all right so once you've got all your fabrics and you know what you're going to be um using set your tools aside and your rulers and everything aside all right so the next thing that we're going to do is once we've got all our supplies together we're going to cut our fabric so as you can see here i'm using some um calico for the lining and i've got my pink for the uh, pink and black for the um exterior and then i'm just going to use the same fabric um because i as i said i had it left over so i'm trying to use up my scraps and i'm just going to use the same fabric for the outside card pockets all right so grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper and get ready to write down these um measurements i will endeavor to have them underneath this video as well so if you miss any you can always just look underneath the video um there'll be either a printout or there'll be something there for you anyway okay so well, let's start with our exterior fabric we need to cut a piece that is four inches wide by four and a quarter in height and the lining is exactly the same and then we have two pockets that we need to um, cut and one is slightly bigger than the other and I'll just set these aside and you can see here that one is just slightly bigger than the other. So our small pocket, which is our top pocket, and you can just write on the back, we want that to be four inches by four and three quarters inches. And then our bottom pocket, which is the one that goes against our exterior, which you'll see in a moment, that is four inches wide by five inches high. 
Okay, so next what you're going to do is you're going to cut some Shape Flex 101 and as you can see, this is slightly smaller than our fabric pieces. Now, because this is a really small project, you really do want to have less bulk as you can in your seam allowances. So that's why we've cut it a little bit smaller. On some of our bigger projects, I don't mind it so much because we do snip out a lot of it anyway, so it's not that bigger deal and we don't have multiple layers or anything like that so I you know it just depends on the process that I'm doing it for so for handbag making I generally because we have multiple layers with it I generally cut it a, a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around or whatever the seam allowance is I will you know cut it to that size because not all patterns have a quarter inch seam allowance okay so you can see here and I don't know whether it's picking up on camera but I've got the measurements marked down for um, each of our um, components so for the top pocket okay we want it to be three and a half inches wide by four and a quarter high for our bottom pocket we want it three and a half inches by four and a half inches and then for our exterior fabric and our lining fabric we want that to be three and a half by three and three quarters and then you just center that down and fuse it to your um, fabrics and it's the bumpy side that goes to the wrong side of the fabric so once you've got all that done we are then ready to move on to the next step so what we need to do is we need to just um, grab our iron and our iron pad uh, ironing pad pop our zipper away for the meantime we don't need that just yet okay and we're going to take our two pockets now the first one you can see here that we're just going to fold that in half and match up our raw edges and then we will give our little item a press shut that drawer now and then we'll take our other pocket and we'll fold that in half as well and give that a press now if you've got a clapper it's really good to use your clapper because that will help you set the seams okay and that's what a clapper is it's not necessary but it does work help a great deal when it comes to setting creases and um, especially for credit card slots okay so I'll just leave that there all right so you can see here that we have two pockets and one is slightly smaller than the other okay now one is the top and one is the bottom all right the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we're going to top stitch this down and you want to just lengthen your stitch length and so we'll head over to the sewing machine and do that okay so you can see there that we've top stitched that down okay so they're not going to open now and if you're not sure that's why i always write on the back with lead pencil to find out which one is which so this is my bottom pocket and this one here is my top pocket okay next what we're going to do is we're going to take one piece of our exterior fabric and we want it to be the shorter end is our width so we want to lay that down then we're going to take our bottom pocket okay and we'll double check that that's our bottom one and we're going to line up our raw edges okay the bottom of our with the bottom of our piece okay making sure that it is all straight okay if you've got it the wrong way your bottom piece of fabric will be bigger than what it what these are so that's just one thing to remember and this is not directional fabric so I can sort of have it going any way I want okay next what I'm going to do you can either use pins or you can use wonder clips I find wonder clips are the easier option okay we're going to make our first pocket and what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this down and we'll do that by doing a half an inch seam allowance okay so that's half an inch seam allowance so let's head over to the sewing machine and stitch that down and um you want to just reduce your stitch length back down again to the default okay so we've stitched that down and next what we're going to do is we're going to take our top pocket and double check that we've got it right and then we're going to lay it down lining up the raw edges just clip that into place so it's not moving on you and then we're going to stitch a quarter inch seam along the bottom 
Now, what I like to do at this point, so this is just not flapping around while I'm trying to do construction, is I will just pop a couple of pins or a wonder clip on just to hold it in place. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a basting stitch and that is going to be like an eighth of an inch or smaller just to hold all those places in place. And I will just basically start from this end and come up and I don't necessarily come all the way up but if you want to you can it's just to hold it in place to stop it from moving so let's head to the sewing machine and do that and I do recommend that you start from this end here okay so get rid of any long threads that you've got so you can see there that I haven't gone all the way up okay but it's going to hold it in place all right now so this is the time to we'll just you can see that our little cards will go in there quite nicely okay and they're going to fit really nice once we've done our quarter inch so that is actually holding everything in place and now what we can do is we can move on to the next step which is installing our zipper all right so for our first piece we're going to lay our zipper with the teeth facing down okay if you um struggle with it moving or anything like that you can use zipper tape um double-sided tape or wonder tape i think it's called um to have it in place but i just used my wonder clips okay and i'll pop that on and then i'm going to take one of my uh, lining pieces and with the right side facing down okay making sure that i've got my four inch width going at the width of the project and i'm just going to line up the edge of the zipper tape with the raw edge of my fabric and make sure that these are lining up so we don't want to just sit it on there and have it a little bit screw if we want to line everything up and just holding that in place i will just re put the wonder clips on okay and then i will double check so you can see there that it's just bent it over okay i will double check that my raw edges and the zipper tape are all lining up so you can see in there that we've got the exterior fabric our lining our lining and then the zipper tape and all their raw edges are lining up so at this point is when you want to pop on your zipper foot okay so i've popped on my zipper foot and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to stitch this down and i will stitch as close as i can to the zipper teeth as possible and you can feel the zipper teeth in there and generally my zipper foot um, the presser foot will run along the edge of this fabric okay so one side will be against it and then yeah we'll get nice and close to those zipper teeth okay so now that we've done that make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and at the end because i forgot to say that i do apologize we are going to top stitch this down so basically we're going to take our exterior and roll that over and i just like to finger press it at this stage okay and get that to sit out of the way and then we're going to flip it over and bring our lining and i just put a little pressure on that and get it to line up with my exterior okay and i'll give that a bit of a finger press and then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the sewing machine again and we're going to lengthen our stitch length and we're going to top stitch that down and what that does is hold our lining away from our zipper teeth so it can be used easily without it jamming so you can see there that that is top stitched down okay and that's holding that seam that we had in there as well and it's holding the zipper tape and it's just given us a little bit of security okay so our next piece of our exterior we want to make sure that we've got it going the right way which that is the four inch width okay now if you've got it this way it will come past what you've got so just double check that you've got it the right way and again we're going to right sides down with our exterior to the teeth okay and we'll grab some wonder clips Where do I go? and we'll just clip just making sure everything is lining up pop a wonder clip on there and a wonder clip on there it's a little bit wonky try that again <laughs> okay now flip it over and grab your X, uh, lining and that is four inches wide again you don't want it to be wider than the bottom fabric okay because then you've got it the wrong way and there's only a quarter inch in it so if you get that get it the wrong way you will have to unpick it because it won't line up for you all right so as you can see we've got that 
situation again where our zipper tape is lining up with our exterior and if it isn't just adjust as you need to and our lining is also so now we're going to head over to the sewing machine and back stitch at the beginning and at the end and stitch that down now remember to also put your stitches back down to de default okay so again get rid of all our long threads and we're going to roll back our lining and we're going to roll back our exterior okay and as i said you'll just give that a nice press okay and this one as well and then we'll head over to the sewing machine and we'll top stitch that down okay so now we have our zipper in and we have top stitched and everything down so things to remember before we do it we want to put our zipper foot on and you want to get as close to those teeth as possible okay without stitching on them and then once you have stitched that you want to lengthen your stitch length just top stitch it down now you can top stitch it all at once because it's pretty easy to do that um, I just did it step by step so you know what you've got to do so just remember to lengthen your whenever you're doing any sort of top stitching you want to lengthen that stitch length all right, so the, now what we want to do is make sure that we have no little threads that are going to go near our zipper at all. So get rid of all of those. Okay, and then we're going to take our zipper in. Okay, and we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're just going to um, just come in about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric and we're just going to on each end stitch a couple of stay stitches and that's just going to hold the zipper together and it's easier to do it at this point than it is after you've snipped it okay because you've got a little bit to hold on to so we just want to bring that zipper in to the fabric okay and then we'll head to the sewing machine and put a couple of stay stitches okay so get um, your paper scissors or a, a sharp pair of scissors that you don't use for your fabric and we're going to snip off this excess zip so I have a special set that I use only for cutting the zips. Sometimes I forget and use my other scissors and I haven't damaged them too badly. Um, if anything, I haven't damaged them at all. Okay, and then we're going to do exactly the same on this end. So you're going to cut that nice and flush, okay, with the edge of your fabric. Okay, you can see there that that bit is, is going to get caught up in the... Um, in the seam allowance anyway okay so at this point in time you want to open your zip up okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to take both of our exteriors okay separating it from the lining and we're going to bring that up and line up our raw edges and pop some clips okay just to hold that in place and then we're going to at the other end do exactly the same thing with our lining only we'll grab a couple of little pins and we're going to make sure that all your raw edges are lining up and then we're just going to leave an opening down the bottom okay um, i leave probably about a two inch opening and we can just top stitch that close if we need to okay next what we're going to do is we're just going to lay everything uh, all our raw edges up line them all up okay on both the lining and also the exterior and then we're going to just fold our zip in half and get that to line up okay so just lining everything up in there you can see that that's quite flat now when we go around you want to be very mindful that you're going to go over some bulk here okay so you just want to be mindful of that and um, make sure that you go a little bit slower and on some machines I even uh, suggest to people just to hand crank it across there don't come at it like a bull in the chine shop um, because you will just snap your needle and no one wants to do that because you can run the risk of throwing your tension out okay so that is all you can see there all my raw edges are lining up so we're good to go so basically what we're going to do is we're going to start at um here at this pin and we are going to back stitch um 
at the beginning and at the end. So we're going to back stitch here, then we'll keep the needle in the down position, we'll pivot and using a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to go all the way around till we get back to this pin here and we'll back stitch there. Now, if you haven't, open your zip, make sure it's open. Take a little peek in there and definitely make sure that your zipper is open because if it isn't, you can't turn your project through and my zipper is definitely open. So let's head to the sewing machine. Now you want to reduce, if you've been top stitching, you want to reduce your stitch length back, length back down to the default and you also want to put your quarter inch foot back on because we're doing a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so we have now stitched all the way around and we've left our little opening. Now as always, I love to use my pinking shears for finishing this off. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go and snip all the way around except we're going to leave our opening, okay, because that's going to make it easier to either hand stitch it close or use your sewing machine. And because we're doing a quick project, I'm going to be using my sewing machine today to close mine off okay so just you're going to just take that little bit off each end down the bottom without cutting into your stitches come very close then didn't I and then we're just going to go all the way around okay now it is a little bit tough getting through that zip but you can do it just take it nice and slow and this is just going to make it nice and easy to turn our project out and give us some really nice corners okay just make sure that you don't go into your stitching or you're going to be sewing it again all right so once you've got all that done get rid of that and just double check if you need to you might need to use your scissors to get rid of some of that bulk near the zip which i was just struck my pinking shears need to be replaced these ones are pretty old i've had them for quite some time all right, get rid of any threads whatsoever off this, okay, because what will happen is if it gets caught up in the um, zip, you'll know about it. You won't be able to use your little coin purse. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to stick our finger in and our index finger, and with our thumb, we're going to turn that out, and it's a little bit tricky, but it can be done. Just get it started, and then we just, as... I've always done when I'm pulling stuff out I just twist it as I'm going and it just comes out really easy okay all right so now we have turned that out okay and we can now get it to resemble the coin purse all right get all your corners and everything out open the zip right up give that a really good nudge okay and so you probably need your chopstick for this okay going to get down into our corners give it a really good and if you can go through your opening to get into those corners to get those card slots to pop out so you can see there I've just got in underneath the lining and get that corner out and then I'll just pop that in there, pop that one in there, get everything to settle down in there. All right, now what I'm going to do is just bring my lining out and I'm just going to poke my corners out, out here and I'm just going to, with my iron, give that a bit of a press. Um, you can finger press it as well, it's pretty easy and I'll just get that all tucked in and then I'll stitch that closed and then finish pushing it out. Okay, that's going to hold nicely there and I just need to get into there to push out that corner a little bit more. There we go. Alright, I'm just going to top stitch that down and I'm just going to use an eighth of an inch seam. I'll get rid of all those threads. getting in the way got one here that's snuck through get rid of that all right now we can push that down in it's a really good press all right okay and that is our little coin purse so you can see there it's quite deep push everything out okay and then we'll grab our cards 
and you can see that they slide in quite nicely. And our second one. that in there. Pop our coins in. And there we go and you can see there that our cards don't come out even with the coins rattling around. But that is our little coin purse and card holder. All right, so thank you very much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoyed our little tutorial on how to make our coin pouch with uh, the little um, card slots to make it nice and easy to run out of the house. I do appreciate everybody clicking and leaving comments and, and all the all the things that you're doing but if you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the little bell icon beside it and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts. And as always I am out of here for today and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now! Bye.